When Thank we you. talk of around 7.5% growth out of China, is this a hard landing? Is this a soft landing? Do you think we should be getting overly, overly pessimistic on this number? Well, what, what's concerning us? Um, we've been forecasting 8% growth. The con market consensus is around 85 What's been concerning us is to get 8% growth, we thought the banks would start to lend a lot more money uh, in the coming few months, and the data is not coming out that way. So when the, when the Chinese Premier then says we're going to look for 7.5% growth, that's telling us not to expect a big boost in new loans from the Chinese banks. That tells us not to assume a big jump then in, say, demand for copper, iron ore, and the commodities that benefit South Africa, Australia, yeah. Russia. Um, so it is a concern. Soft, it's more soft than hard. Hard is where, where I think 6% or less would be what I'd think of as a hard landing. But every step towards that and the markets get a little bit more jittery. Well, Charles, I mean, the reality is that we've seen copper, iron ore, we've seen all the industrial commodities performing relatively well over the past couple of years. Do you think that these kind of numbers are enough to create a significant slump in the overall market? Or do you think that we could actually sustain these levels? No, well, to be fair, I think growth was likely to slow anyway. Uh, Ten years ago, when China was growing at 10%, it was adding about $100 billion to its GDP. It's the equivalent of, say, in Morocco. Uh, today, when it's growing at nearly 10%, it's adding over a trillion dollars. It's the equivalent of another South Korea or a Mexico. Uh, and these, this is unsustainable. Uh, in terms of what that's going to mean for commodity demand, it, it's almost too much. So we have to see Chinese growth slow. Uh, I don't think we're going to see sustainable 10% growth in China again, but something around 7 to 8. That's what's in the five-year plan. That is what we're heading for. It's just at a time when the world's already weak in America, we've got recession in Europe, it would have been nice to see a little bit of an unsustainable growth story in China, just a little bit more on the upside this year. Absolutely. Well, let's just touch on the reserve requirement ratios in China because for quite a long time we saw that being increased and because the inflation scenario was out of control. That now seems to be intact pretty much and that's why we saw a drop in the reserve requirement ratio for banks. What kind of scenario are you playing out there? And again, we keep talking about this inflation worry that we see coming through predominantly in the emerging market space. Is that going to be under control going forward? without hampering the growth outlook too much? The inflation story in China is uh, they're looking for around 4% inflation. Uh, the figure in January is 4.5%. That is still a little too high for comfort in China. Uh, Chinese people tend to save their money on cash, in deposits, earning no more than 3%. So they're losing money at the moment on their savings. So inflation is a concern. You've got oil prices heading up, another concern. You've got QE from everybody, Japan, Europe, the US, potentially pushing up prices of commodities or at least risking inflation. So these are all the, the headwinds. Are they a problem today? No. Could they be a problem in six months' time? Yes. So for China, what does that mean for reserve requirement cuts? They are going to be modest. The market's only been looking for 200 basis points over, say, 12 months. We've had about 100. There's only a couple, two or three more cuts perhaps to come if the market's right. Uh, in their thinking at the moment. And inflation is the key number to watch. If that comes down to 2 or 3%, then China can start lending more. And good yeah. news for, for commodity exports. Absolutely. Well, Charles, I mean, what kind of um, then economic scenario are you pricing in for the overall emerging market space? Because for some time now, we've been looking to China to be the saving grace, and it has been the saving grace. And you've alluded to it would have been nice to see unsustainable double digit growth in that region. It's not going to come to the fore. So, can we start being slightly more uh, pessimistic or cautious when it comes to South African growth, for example? Well, I think we're, we're looking for around 3%, I think 2.8% growth in South Africa. Um, that actually for EMEA countries is pretty good. Um, Poland, Hungary, uh, Turkey, there's a number of countries further to the north that would love to get those sort of numbers. So it's, it's not a bad number for South Africa. And I guess what I'd, I'd say 8%, it's okay for China, but for global markets, people have been pricing in all the good news coming from QE. Uh, now they're going to have to start looking at the headwinds, which is China might not give us all the gains we want. Yeah. US fiscal tightening, perhaps something to worry about later this year. High oil prices, perhaps another headwind for us to face through the course of 2012. So I think the markets might begin to start looking at the negatives rather than the positives um, as we head through the year. 
Let's touch on Russia. It's an interesting market. And as I mentioned a little earlier, the Russian tier is sitting in positive territory today. Uh, a possible third term coming through for Vladimir Putin. And it seems that a big focus is going to come on whether uh, we're going to see policy changes and whether he's also going to make good on the, the economic promises that he's been making. And then there's also something that we talk of, the middle income trap as well. Uh, give us an indication of your overall outlook for that region. Russia looks good relative to everybody else in emerging Europe. Um, growth of around 3% is quite plausible this year. Credit growth picking up. And, and now Putin's saying he's going to spend a fortune uh, on defense spending, on education. Uh, they're also talking about a big privatization program. So there's quite a lot to look forward to. Uh, the markets have taken the election result pretty well. Um, they're relieved by the fact that it's come in in line with expectations. Uh, they'd also like to see uh, less corruption. Um, that's certainly been a, an issue which hurts investors looking at Russia. It's one of the reasons perhaps that equity prices aren't as high as they could be. And Putin's promising to make progress there too. He's got a lot on his plate in the next few years.